folks, this is a video to show you how to set up your Windows computer as a uh, PHP MySQL dev environment so that you can do your PHP and MySQL from your own computer. So, this is very similar to what we did in the first class, so I'm just going to go through the steps so you see exactly how it works. So. Step one, I need to download the required software. So I'm going to start up our browser and I'm going to go to ecphp.org. If you need the, if you need that URL, it's available on our Concordia class site. Now, ecphp has two separate things. It has PHP development and it has a personal web server. So in our case, we want to do PHP development, so we're going to stay on the left-hand side here. So we're going to download uh, this, which is version 13.1. On this side, you'll see that there's two current versions. There's 13.1 VC9 and 13.1 VC11. Version VC11 doesn't seem to work with all versions of Windows right now, so we're going to stick with 13.1 VC9. So I'm going to scroll down here and click on the 13.1 VC9 link. And on this page, we're going to click right here to start the download. As it's downloading, I'm just going to remind you that in order to do uh, PHP and MySQL development, you need three pieces of software on your computer. Number one, you need an actual web server in the so in our case we're going to use something called Apache we also need a database in our case we're going to use MySQL and we also need the language we're going to use which in our case is PHP you could go out on the web and download each of those individual things on their own. You could go get Apache, you could go get MySQL, and you could go get PHP. The issue with that is you then have to configure them to properly work together, which could be a challenge in certain circumstances. So, what ECPHP does is it puts all those pieces of software together for you in a nice, easy to use package. So instead of having to go and get the three individual things yourself, you just have to get ECPHP. So, so, we've now downloaded ECPHP. You'll see down here the download is complete. So I'm just going to now open that up. If you're using a different browser, like Internet Explorer or Firefox or something, you may have to go into your Downloads folder or somewhere to get to the download. In any case, you want to open up the download. In my case, I get a security warning, so I'm going to just say Run, and now the PHP, uh, sorry, the Easy PHP installer has started up. I'm going to choose English. We get this page, which just gives us some basic information. I'll choose next. We then get the license agreements. I will accept the license agreements and choose next. It then tells us that EasyPHP is really for development and not for production. Don't worry too much about that. You can just click next. Then it asks us where do we want the software to be installed. I'm just going to take the default, choose next. In my case, it already exists, that's okay, so I'll choose yes. And finally, it's going to ask us where do we want this to show up on our start menu. And I will go ahead and just take the default and choose next. Finally, I will install the software. As it's installing, 
we'll just wait a minute here and it'll be installed in a second. As soon as it's done, it's going to ask us two more questions. The first question is, do we want to open up the help after we exit? I'm not going to open that up and I'm not going to launch Easy PHP either because I want to show you how to launch it yourself. So I'm going to click finish and we've now downloaded and installed the Easy PHP. So our computer is now ready for PHP and MySQL development. You could start a project from scratch by creating web pages and PHP pages, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the Concordia course site and just download the sample of things that we made during the first night of our class. So I'm going to go here and choose my Concordia in the browser. I'm going to log into my Concordia. I'm going to go to our course, which is CEWP 459, and you'll see that I've uploaded something called Simple PHP Example. I'm going to download that. I'm going to open it up, and you'll see that there's three things in this zip. I really only care about the bottom two, which is the name.html and name.php. I'm going to drag those onto the desktop and essentially these are the two little examples that we made the other night. Name.html contains a little form that asks you for your name and your age and name.php is a little script that basically does a tiny bit of processing. Now the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to, these are now on the desktop, but they need to be actually part of my website. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start up the Easy PHP server. Now notice when I started it up, it didn't look like anything changed or it didn't look like anything started. That's because servers are typically in the background. You don't see them. The only thing we do see is this little E here that shows us that PHP is started up. So if I right click, I get this little menu. Okay, the first thing I want to do is I want to go to Explore. Now, I'm just going to remove these two files because I've already done this demo. So this is the way it'll typically start. Our local web just has a few um, folders. I'm going to take the two things we downloaded and drop them into the local web. Again, name.html and name.php. Anything that's in this directory can be uh, served through Apache. Now, how do we actually see our website? Well, let's go back to the E, right click. And this time we'll choose local web. That'll start up a browser and it'll show us the content of our website. Only things that are in this folder will show up on our website. So, in our case, we have name.html and name.php. Throughout the course, you're going to be making lots of HTML pages and lots of PHP pages. So the first thing I'm going to do here is just talk about this number for a moment. This number is the IP address of the local computer. This number works on any computer and it always refers to itself. Some people, instead of using that uh, number, prefer the word localhost. Localhost is the URL or the domain name of the computer you're currently on. So, if I choose localhost, I see the same thing. I basically see a, the contents of my website. Now, if I 
want to serve or if I want to see name.html, I can either click on it right here and it'll load up that web page. And you'll see it looks very similar to the web page we built the other night. Now, if you recall, this web page has a form and that form is linked to a PHP page. For example, if I quickly view the source, you'll see that there's a form here that has an action that goes to name.php. So if I fill in the form, so I'll put in my name and I'll put in my age. Whoops, don't tell anybody my real age. And if I click go, that's going to send this information to our script. So you'll see the URL has now been updated. And we get the output of our PHP script. Now again, this little demo is not about the PHP. We're going to learn PHP for the next nine weeks. This little demo is just to show you how to get things set up. Now, let's go back to this page and let me show you that the local host of the server is really doing something because if I go down here and I go to the E, I can exit Easy PHP. So essentially, I've turned off our servers, so there's no more PHP, no more Apache. So now, well, what's going to happen if I try and reload this page? You'll see that we're going to get a page not found because our server's no longer uh, writing. Okay. That was a pretty quick video just to summarize what we did the other night. If you have any questions or comments, please get in touch via our uh, course website or via email. And uh, I will see you this coming Thursday. Have a great day. Bye-bye.